the false belief yep. in that example. Yep. Um, I've gathered a lot of um, facts that that false belief is not true and I thought that I didn't want to let go of the false belief because what I was getting from it. But I've realised that the false belief is if that belief disappears, you said blank slate, I feel desolate annihilation. Yeah. And I've got, I don't and know And I think it's to, fantastic. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> but Laura get, doesn't. Laura doesn't know. I can't get experience of what, that be, what it would be like without the belief because I've had the belief since I was born. But I know that the belief itself is false. But can you see how much your own personal psychological self is bound up in your beliefs? Because if, if, you can, if you're finding it impossible to release a belief that you know is false, then it tells me that you psychologically are so attached to your belief systems that they define you. So, so what you're doing is you're holding on to belief systems that define you. But that blank slate, re it feels like... A de it feel <gasps> it's like this, I'm just in an abyss of empty... Like it, yeah, and really that's a frightening. false belief too. And can you see um, what Jesus was just saying about that's because it's related to your identity? Yes. I don't feel that bit hit you. Yeah, that yeah. bit never hit you. Yeah. Do you it understand? Definitely you don't understand me. how much your psychological identity is, is, is identifying with false beliefs. Now, you, you remember we drew this circle. This is God's universe, if you like. And he is all your creations. Or we could say all of your environment's creations, which are all outside of God's universe in a way. Because God's universe are all based upon truth and, and law and love, right? This is God's universe. This is where God created. This is where you created, right? Or you could say your parents created if you grew up in an environment. And this is all to do with false, error, and so forth. But unfortunately, many of us have become psychologically attached to that. We've become so attached to that that we think giving that up is a major drama, well, I was saying, I, I feel like all, like every ounce of my will has been invested in ma in this false belief, making wanting it to be real. I agree. But to let it go, that, I I don't know where else I'd be. It's... Well, see, if you had faith, you would let it go unhesitatingly. And do I need the faith there before I can trust that there's like developing, or there'll be Laura, a period? Laura, stop! Then? Stop! Stop! <laughs> You haven't heard what I just said. Yeah. And, and this is what we do. We go, but, 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 but. And, this, and all, all it is is this psyche, if you could say, this, this impression that you have of yourself, a lot of people call that the ego, do they not? Yeah. Right? In, the, in, in New Age terminology, they'd call that the ego. Right? And I call it the psychological, your own psychological... Uh, yes. P -S -Y. Yes. Yeah. Impression of yourself, which is false, right? And because it's psychological in its nature, it's going to feel like you're giving up yourself when you give up this. Yeah. And this is why most people hold on and choose to use their will to hold on to false beliefs. Because their false beliefs are so entwined with who they believe they are, Right? They feel that if they give that up, then themselves has to be given up. The, the reality is, that's not who you are. And you have no faith that that's true. Who you are is, belongs in this area. In God's universe, how God designed you to be. That's who you really are. And you don't have any faith in that at all. Because if you had faith in that, you'd willingly give that up instead of fight for it. And I, I feel this... The reason we struggle with this a lot, even when we hear the truth, is because of this rebellion feeling that we have and the anger about feeling uncertainty, feeling psychological distress. Or um, even feeling like we're being totally psychologically destroyed. Yeah. It, it, it in the end involves the, almost a destruction, not of ourselves, but of who we imagine ourselves to be. This self-concept that we want to hold on to, that's error-based. Yeah, that's exactly right. Where yeah. I'm at. Does that make sense? 
And many of us are going to have to go through this destruction because most of our cells that we currently see as really, really good is completely out of harmony with all of God's universal laws and truth about love and faith and humility and all these other qualities. And uh, Laurie said about, well, what about, how do I, how do I have the faith to do the thing? And again, I feel it's about Experiment. experimenting and having experience. That's the only way your faith will grow. But a lot of us, and I would include myself in this group, we just get angry about having to do it and that makes us never experiment. You go, no, this feels uncomfortable and I don't want to and now I'm going to be angry about it and so, say... So we're all like little children going, no, 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 I don't want to experiment. <laughs> yes. I might make a mistake. It feels Somebody might punish me. Somebody yeah. might... Well, I also want, really want to know what's on the other side first. Like, I want to know that... I'm oh, sorry. You do know what's on the other side first. <laughs> yeah. What's on the other side is love, truth, <laughs> all these beautiful things. <laughs> That's what's on the other side. You've been told what's on the other side. You just do not have faith in it. Right? That's the problem. And faith in it won't come until some of this is willing to, get, to go. 